above the old original Journal Herald office in 96 High Street. Memories at that time were that we used to go through the, through the front office, up numerous stairs, um, and then my grandfather's room was on the right, his bedroom was on the right. We had a little auntie who today would be called educationally subnormal. She had a little tiny bedroom. Uh, my auntie had another room and we had one, one bedroom between us, my brother and myself, mother and father. So I slept with my mother and my brother slept with my father. Nothing else at all, no bathroom, nothing whatsoever. Um, and I can remember at the back of the ground floor, right down the back, which came out onto the strand, was the printing works and we were invited as children to go down and watch them printing and we could see them put these little individual metal letters backwards all the way along to print the journal. That was the printing works for the North Devon Journal. And we used to be given our journal through the letterbox on a Wednesday night before anybody else had it. We can remember there was a gentleman called Mr. Watts, I think he was, who had a horse and cart and brought the milk in churns and poured, he took out a jug and put, had the milk put in. I only just about remember that. We can remember there was a jewellers called Darks opposite and Timothy Whites were where, I'm not sure it's called the pound shop or something, something like that are now. Timothy Whites were there, which was a chemist. Mm -hmm. um, we can remember seeing someone dressed in army uniform trying to break into darks and we phoned the police and we saw him arrested around the back of what was Timothy White's. Yeah, and I can remember in at the end of going up from Thornby towards Beckwood Street there was a a cigarette a chap with a cigarette so I can't remember his name but I've seen it written in a book and my auntie used to call him the cigarette boy and I was allowed, without any, you know, no, no, oh, who are you, how old are you? Even as a small child, I was allowed to go and get my auntie's cigarettes from him, which you wouldn't be allowed to do now. Yeah, I was only seven or eight at the time. So, uh, I can't remember what he was called. And I can remember up where Marbeth, this is later on, when we were in Victoria Road, um, where Marlborough Fabrics is now, there used to be a gentleman, a grocer, who he was called Alfred Huxable. And when television came in first, I used to used to go with my mother, and we used to go in and watch Coronation Street in a black and white black and white screen. And I, I can remember how he did it. I don't know. One thing I can remember, he had cans of beans or soup, and he would put one. On the in the window, and he would balance one at an angle on the top of it, and he would balance a third one. And I cannot, I can do two, but I can't do three. How he got it there, I don't know. I said, "Is that stuck?" And he said, "No," and he took it off. How he balanced them, I do not know. So that's one thing I can remember about him. Uh, going down High Street from the Butcher's Row, on the right hand side, there's a little cafe there now. You used to go down a step and there was a lady in there whose hair was had blonde, hair was done up in a bun on the top and her shoes went bang, 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 tap, tap, tap across the floor and we used to call her the dolled up dapper. <laughs> it's now a cafe. I've been in there and told them that. <laughs> oh.